I will request all the participants to enter login by their names and keep their mics unmute until given chance. Distinguished delegates, participants, and partakers, a warm greeting and good day to one and all. It gives me immense warmth and great pleasure to grace all your presence in the interest of the entire committee. It gives me tremendous contentment to be presenting the welcome speech amongst the most esteemed personalities who have won accolades in their respective fields. Well, on behalf of the World Resources Webinar, it is my distinct honor, a proud privilege, and an occasion of great personal gratification to cordially welcome our dearest resource speakers to this workshop. I want to thank you all for taking your precious time from your busy schedules to join the workshop organized by the World Resource Webinar. It's so wonderful to see and be in the company of so many colleagues and wise sages of numerous communities. So first and foremost, World Resource Webinar serves the noble interest and wider perspective to innovation with global inclusive development. I would like to read the genesis of the World Resource Webinar. A public member of the World Economic Forum was seated on 2nd August 2020 during the pandemic with the support of academics, industry and researchers from various parts of the world. Global Connect of Expertise in new emerging technologies, inclusive of professionals, academics, researchers, and innovators. Scope shall include all evolving knowledge, skills, innovation, and patenting in emerging technologies. Furthermore, I offer my regards to all the guest speakers and participants who are joining us. I believe that by participating in this workshop, we are in the right place and right time. So together, let us accelerate the exchange of ideas, as well as scaling up good practices. Also, I'm confident that you will find new ideas and methods to sustain your efforts in support of this workshop. I ensure the workshop will be profitable and fruitful for everyone present here. Once again, thank you and all for being here with us today. Now, I request Abdul Safan from CSE department to take over the session. Uh, thank you so much, Priyadashini. Okay, let's start our session. First of all, we heartily invite Dr. Aditya Kumar Shahu, who's Associate Professor, CAC Department, Bingham University, Guntur. He done his PhD in KL University, Master's in uh, MITS, Odisha, Bachelor degree in Gandhi Institute of Engineering, uh, Gunatpur University, and he done a numerous amount of uh, SEI publications, Scopus and ES, uh, ESCI publications. And he also done Patents name a uh, neural network based method for data parsing and parameters using Fiji, Fiji term identifications and numerous. Now I highly invite you to present your speech, sir. Uh, Professor Sahu. Yeah, thank you, sir. Thank you, uh, Professor Abjad. Yes, sir, shall I start, sir? You can. Yeah, thank you, Dr. Sahu, you are on mute. Sahu, you are on mute. Yeah, now it is fine, sir. Yeah, yeah, it's okay. Yeah, great. Thank you. Uh, my screen is visible, sir. Yes, sir. 
yeah thank you thank you very much sir i'm glad and thankful to the you know this organizing committee sir and everyone all the participants who are present here for this wonderful blockchain <laughs> workshop and uh, myself dr ek sahu working as an associate professor in the department of csc in the university on the premise yeah uh, i'll be teaching i'll be uh, speaking about the introduction to blockchain types of blockchain who are the companies adopting blockchain technologies what are the merits the merits issues of blockchain uh, it's all about the introduction of blockchains in my part right so before starting the things uh, i would like to introduce the contents of this today's uh, talk like these are the contents as we discuss now like uh, the first thing is so why it is blockchain and what is blockchain before that we should know why it is blockchain right uh, the idea is the way it stores we must know about blockchain stores information okay and the way it stores the informations the way it stores the transaction data in blocks and those blocks are linked together to form a chain right that's why we say it's a combination of two word in fact makes a single word called as block chain actually it's a block as well as chain right now coming to uh, the you know different features of blockchain the foremost features of blockchain is trust transparency and traceability and these three things trust transparency and traceability are the foundation of a blockchain network right we say blockchain is the future of internet right the blocks in the blockchains are encrypted in such a way that it is nearly you know impossible to tamper the blocks right so we must uh, we know that a blockchain is a decentralized digital ledger okay it's a decentralized digital ledger of transactions maintained by a network of computer right so it is maintained in such a way that it is difficult to alter the data inside the blocks in the blockchain network right now we also know that we'll come to what is the decentralized digital ledger the thing, the name distributed ledger or decentralized distributed ledger is nothing but but there is no central authority in a blockchain network ledger is nothing but it's a kind of database where we store some information however we must know that like the different there is a subtle difference between the database and ledger and, and uh, you know as well as this ledger there is a difference i'll come to that point before that i would like to introduce blockchain in in, in more detail now coming to this uh, the impact of blockchain the the role of blockchain in the development of a country's economy is huge you know it offers different affordable solutions okay uh, you know to participate cross border transactions industry okay automation industry banking government healthcare media insurance you name it any such agency where now it is is blockchain is not being taken you know positively right so every agency is you know coming forward to take the blockchains because it provides trust transparency as well as traceability right no the, the the fundamental thing about blockchain is it helps us in achieving data privacy right so in fact the concept of blockchain was started in 91 by stuart haver and scott steronetta right however we know that satoshi nakamoto is the uh, one who actually initiated the blockchains in physical right so coming to this blockchain we have little bit idea now having blockchain and we can go inside how exactly it works like you see uh, this is a block these are the blocks and they, the the there will be some data inside each blocks and they will be connected and all the blocks will be connected right there is no central authority of any of the blocks or in this blockchains right so every block in this blockchain contains cryptographic oh, what exactly a block contains 
is contains in nothing but cryptographic hardware. Whatever data we want to put inside the blocks, it will be encrypted in a cryptographic hash, which is the string of fixed length of numbers as well as characters or letters, right? So this hash is generated after every transaction. So each, each block stores some transaction. So when we add a new transaction to another block, okay, a new hash value will be generated. So that's very, you know, very nice that blockchains maintain such kind of, you know, hash values. Now we cannot alter any block of or any data of any block because when you want to change a, you know, data of a block, what will happen? The corresponding hash value also will be, you know, changes. Okay. So when you want, when we are altering any data inside any block, that will inform to all other blocks, right? And it cannot be authenticated if any other blocks, you know, objects. Okay. So it means you can easily identify any kind of forgery in a blockchain. Okay. So the blocks in blockchains are spread in different computers. As I say, it's a distributed. Okay. And uh, those blocks also, we can call it them as a nodes, right? And uh, though these nodes, it will be identified whether a modification, you know, using those nodes only, we can able to identify whether there's a modification or done is not. Now, as I told, the ledger blockchain is a distributed, right? Decentralized digital ledger, we say, right? What the, exactly the ledger? It's a kind of database, right? However, there is difference between database, normal database, as well what we see in, you know, like a SQL, other kind of databases, right? But and this ledger blockchain database is quite different, right? Let us come to that, how exactly they are different, okay? Normally what happens in our database, okay, it is a kind, it is a kind of data structure where we store some data, right? So whereas coming to this, what happens, a database will have an administrator. Now this blockchains do not maintain by anyone. So everyone, who participates in this blockchain transaction is itself, itself is an honor, you know, owner, right? So, so the a blockchain is a growing list of record called blocks that are linked using, you know, encryptedly or cryptographic using cryptographic techniques. It is being you know, used, right? So this is all about the difference between typical database as well as a blockchain. Okay, coming to what does blockchain actually do? A blockchain, as we say, decentralized ledger, okay, and it always maintains the transaction across the peer-to-peer -peer network. Using this technology, we can confirm the participants who participates in this transaction can confirm, okay, transactions without the need of any central clearing authority, right? So potential applications, as I said, funding, you know, while fund transfer, healthcare, education, Okay, any kind of electronic polling or voting. So many issues can be, you know, it is an infant stage, like, so many companies are coming forward to adopt this technology. So it is a kind of good research topic also, right? So nowadays, you know, like blockchain is being a buzzword in, you know, in this, you know, this computing world. So this is actually the transaction process of a blockchain. What happened? A transaction when it requested, then it has to be authenticated. Now every transaction will be stored in a block, right? Now a block. What happens when it has to take participate in the blockchain network, right? All the participants who are present, okay, they will be intimated. Okay, they will be you know informed about this new participants and they will be storing a copy about this new participants. Okay, and finally they will validate this blocks or validate this transaction. And in fact, in such a way that, okay, this cryptographic hash value for this block will be stored among every, you know, participants. And finally, what happened? Uh, you know, there will be a distributed network collect with by collect by, you know, by, you know, adding or collection of this block. <laughs> Please mute. Thank you. Yeah. <laughs> 
Dr. Sahu, uh, Praveen, uh, please uh, unmute, uh, mute yourself. Uh, Dr. Sahu, can you unmute yourself? Ah. Yeah, yeah. Now, now, now there now? was an interruption. Sorry. Uh, go ahead, please. Yes, coming to this public blockchain. Okay, so it completely follows the idea of decentralization, right? So decentralized in the sense nobody is being the owner or central authority to take decision or to validate the authenticity of any blocks, right? So there is no restriction. Anyone having a computer, a system, okay, a gadget, okay, and internet technology can participate in this public blockchain. Okay, if the name is public, this blockchain is open for all the publics. Okay, it's publicly available. Anyone who, okay, because nobody is owned. Okay, so anyone having this kind of system and computer can participate. So this is about uh, public blockchain. Okay. Now, there are some advantages of uh, public blockchain that are trustable. Okay, so there are few algorithms. If it is being changed, it can easily detect the tampers that are being happened to the blocks. Okay, participants need not need to worry about this public nature of this uh, blocks, right? Yeah, since the blockchain is public, we can say that it can, you know, humongous amount of uh, participants can you know join. Therefore, okay, still as I told, like uh, there are few detection algorithms. Detect. Okay, but the size is a little bit uh, larger, and since the size is larger, you can see the disadvantage is a processing speed, right? So it will be slow because every time a block joins in the network, every time a block join in the network, it has to validate. And since the block size is large, it, while validating every block will take, you know, quite more time right and of course in this process it will consume a lot of energy okay so these are the benefits and these are the you know disadvantages of public coming to the private okay they are not these blocks in this blockchains are not decentralized like is public blockchain however okay uh, they, they, you know, however, there is no central authority. Even though it is private, few members, few groups will be there to take the decisions about the, you know, authenticity of the block. However, this public, this private blockchain is not public to all. Okay, some authorized users can only take participants in their network or in their block, in this blockchain. Okay, so it therefore in some authorized group means it's a kind of closed loop or closed network. Right. Few people are allowed to participate in a network, okay? Or you can say the company inside a company, we can have a blockchain kind of things, okay? Of course, when you have a small range of uh, the volume is slow, I mean, volume is less, then of course the speed will be always be, you know, high in, 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 in this consideration, okay? Network concentration. Scalability also will be better, okay? Because the size is small, we can always fix an issue, okay? Privacy always will be better, because we will have a trusted customers, I mean, trusted participants participating in this network. So privacy is always is a benefit. Okay. So and some kind of disadvantage security. Okay. The number of nodes in this type is limited. So chances of manipulations are there. Okay. Because uh, these blocks are more vulnerable, you know, the chances of, you know, you know, this uh, kind of manipulation is more because every node who are the participants having idea about the blocks, 
right? Okay, whose blocks? Kind of things. Okay, uh, although nobody knows who who is owner of any blocks, but still, it's a close group. Some idea can be generated, right? Centralized. Okay, so its main disadvantage of this is centralized because it belongs to an organization. The organization can sometimes use for its you know benefits, can do malpractices, right? So count, since it is small, okay, the number of nodes will be less. Right. Hybrid blockchain is a combination of both, right? It's a combination of both public as well as private blockchain, okay? Both permission and permissionless systems can be used, okay? So the advantage is the ecosystem, okay? So the ecosystem means it can have the benefits of both public as well as the benefits of private, right? As and when it is required depending upon the situation demands, okay, we can turn to or switch to the kind of infrastructure. Cost, yes, cost is cheaper compared to other two, okay. Architecture is customizable, okay. And but still it maintains high security, integrity as well as transparency, okay. And some issues like efficiency and transparency can be there, okay. But however, this can be eradicated using a good algorithm, we can detect that. Constorium blockchain, it's a creative approach that solves the needs of any organization. Okay. Now, the blockchain validates the transaction and also initiates receives transaction. This is a federated, also known as this custodium, is also known as federated blockchain. Okay. So it can solve any organization needs. Okay. Yes, yeah, some part will be public. It's a kind of hybrid, and some part will be you know, private. Right. Advantage speed. Okay. This, since it's limited, speed will be more. Okay, disadvantage is transparency and vulnerability. It is quite vulnerable for attack, right? And uh, these are the advantages. Finally, these are the advantages of uh, this using blockchains. Okay, so human involvement is very less. So we can say accuracy will be high. Okay, while validating every individual blocks. Okay, and we can also say since human involvement is less, trust will be more. Okay, and due to the nature of decentralized digital ledger, okay, it makes harder for anyone to temper or alter or modify the contents or the blocks, okay, data inside the blocks. So it also can reduce drastically, okay, cost, okay, and transparency is always in you know, a benefit for blockchain. Okay, immutable records. As we say, immutable means we can't change, right? Smart contracts, like we can have a smart contract with each participants. Okay, this is definitely useful. Disadvantage is some, some, you know, some cases we may feel, you know, although this might not be a disadvantage, data modification is not possible. Of course, it's always an advantage, but in some cases, we may require to modify the data. You know, like, you know, some kind of when somebody is doing cryptographic, uh, you know, encryption or steganographic encryption or watermark kind of things, we require modification. In that case, it might not be useful. Okay. Storage limitation is definitely an issue. Okay. Because when your uh, network blockchain network will grow, grow large. Okay. So, yes, there might be some issues. Okay. Uh, and the, the owner cannot access the private key, as I told. Okay, and uh, there's a lot of scope of evolution in blockchain in different, you know, multi sectors, okay, interdisciplinary sectors. It is a good chance of, you know, is blockchain is the future, of course, definitely is no doubt the blockchain is the future of internet. Okay, they told unfilterable, trusted, and uh, uncensorable, transparent, traceability, and trust due to these features, due to these characteristics, okay. This is going to be the future of internet, undoubtedly. And who are the biggest companies at present uh, who is owning the, you know, is who is taking part in this blockchain or adopting the this technology? Coinbase and Monex, Bit, you know, BIT, and Canon and Viger and Sauce, Hive Blockchain and Silvergate. Okay, these are the few names. Even in fact, if you see Google, you will get thousand names. Uh, the companies who are adopting blockchain. Right. So finally, who owns the blockchain? In fact, the answer is nobody yet. Everybody. Right. So this is from my end, Professor, and uh, I'd be grateful uh, if you can continue. Thank you, sir.
Thank you so much, sir. That was very clear and informative. Uh, let's continue with the session. Uh, next, I'd like yeah. to invite um, A.S. Ankita, uh, MCA, MPhil, NET, PhD. She has 12 years of experience and working as an assistant professor in the Department of Computer Science in ST Hindu College of uh, Nagarkoyo. And her achievement, she participated and presented a paper titled Blockchain uh, Technology to Prevent Fraudulent Activities in Vaccine Supply Chain Management in an international conference conducted by Sarada College and a numerous amount of students. Now I'd like ma'am to present the screen and start your presentation. Thank you, Adzia, for your introduction. Can everybody see my screen? Am I audible? Yeah, you are seeing the problem and unmute. Yes, ma'am. It was quite confused because same Priya. Am I audible? Uh, yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. Hello, everyone. My topic is blockchain and supply chain management. First, we can see the possible identities of the blockchain creator Satoshi Nakamoto. Sat Satoshi Nakamoto is a pseudonym for a person or people who created the first blockchain database. A blockchain is a database, but a database is not a blockchain. Already Professor Sahu has explained elaborately about the blockchain. Um, now, now I am going to give a very quick recap about the blockchain. Next, we can see some key features of blockchain. Blockchain run on a peer-to-peer -peer network via the internet without any central server. As a result, they do not have a single point of failure or attack. In blockchain, decentralization refers to the transfer of control and decision-making from a centralized entity to a distributed network. Transparent in the sense it is entirely traceable and much easier to maintain. Here we can see the block structure. Each block has two main partitions, the head, uh, block head and a block body. The block header contains the block version, parent block hash, nuns, Merkle root hash, and timestamp. The block body contains the list of transactions. Each block has its own hash and the hash of the previous block. We can see this hash of this block, block three and the previous hash value, that is the blocks, uh, second block's hash value. So each block has its own hash and the hash of the previous block. In this manner, the blocks are interconnected. The first block is called Genesis block or block zero, as it does not have any previous block. Next, we can see what are the disadvantages of using IoT alone enabled supply chain management. The global IoT industry is expected to reach $1.6 trillion by 2025, but still no global IoT security standards are maintained. A proper encryption mechanism is required to maintain data security. A prop, no, IoT device attacks, DOS attack, man in the middle attack are some of the IoT security threats. The integration of blockchain with IoT improves the traceability and tracking of commodities from point of origin to point of destination. It can also help to increase the customer trust on the products they buy. Now let's see how the convergence of blockchain and IoT increase the consumer's trust on the product they buy. When it comes to food traceability, it is vital to show where the food was sourced from and where it has been. Within Walmart in 2016, when the vice president of food safety in the company asked his team members to trace the origin of a packed sliced mangoes, it took six days, 18 hours and 26 minutes while all the data was stored on the system. After partnering with IBM, Walmart could trace the mangoes stored in its US stores within 2.2 seconds. Now let's consider the dairy products supply chain management. 
the form from where the milk is produced is registered and its information is stored in a barcode or QR code. This code is then hashed and it is stored in a block. The identity of various producers are also authenticated with unique hash value and stored in a block. Now the milk from various producers reach the factory where it is processed and distributed through logistics. <coughs> Excuse me. Uh, the range of temperature to be maintained, the range of temperature to be maintained uh, throughout the logistics is written in the contract. Then the products will be for sale in various retail shops. When the consumer buys the product, he or she can check the veracity of the information provided on the product. First, the customer needs to scan the track and trace number and then send it to the smart contract. After verification, after verification uh, by the smart contract, a report is sent back to the uh, consumer's mobile application. In this way, the um, uh, cons a consumer is able to track the origin of the products they buy. Next, we can see the con uh, convergence of IoT and blockchain benefits. The World Economic Forum uh, says uh, blockchain technology can overcome supply chain problems exposed by COVID-19 and can also enhance the economic recovery. Blockchain enabled IoT applications can track billions of connected devices, allowing for transaction processing and device coordination. The encryption algorithms used uh, would make the consumer data more private. Next, we can see the benefits. The main issue, um, uh, it can speed up uh, the administrative process by eliminating the intermediators and middlemen. As we see, the real-time traceability is possible. During transportation, in case of damage of goods, instant insurance claim fulfillment is provided. In customs, there is no need to depend on brokers to ensure the accuracy of documentation. In case of distribution, casing and batching are efficiently handled that improve the container's utilization. Next, we are going to see about the blockchain uh, integrated vaccine supply chain management. Here, first, we can see the what are the challenges faced. The main issue in managing a vaccine supply chain is that each supplier must be trusted. Hoarding, conducting may have fake medical camps, black marketing, suppliers behaving like capitalists, resource exploitation, or some of the common threats. The challenge of storing the vaccine in cold storage is a necessity. Nearly 3 million people live in areas that lack temperature controlled storage. Thus the vaccine of a vac uh, journey of a vaccine from production to distribution is complex for many reasons. Next, um, the, next we are going to see about the vaccine distribution process. The DHL president, that is the logistics president, D, uh, DHL, DHL Logistics President represent COVID-19 vaccine distribution as the biggest global logistics since World War II. Using IoT sensors, um, uh, the temperature, humidity, movement of goods can be monitored. For example, the range of temperature to be maintained throughout the logistics is written in the document. The COVID-19 vaccines are labeled with the bioprint uh, which is used to track and trace the veracity of information. The patients are also authenticated and then vaccinated. Next, the uh, benefits of using blockchain in a uh, vaccine supply chain management. Uh, blockchain can provide end-to-end -end track and traceability of the vaccine distribution and thereby eliminating the blind spots across the origin of destination. Um, Unforeseen occurrences, forgery, adverse responses uh, can be detected and reported ahead of time, allowing vaccines to be distributed ready to use. It also improves the efficacy and build trust upon the vaccine. Pfizer Incorporation is a blockchain-enabled vaccine supply chain management. It uses an iPhone operating system-based application known as KitChain. 
The application is built on top of the Hyperledger fabric, which is an open source Linux foundation project. It enables user to send messages between the shippers, recipients, and third parties. In comparison to Ethereum's proof of work consensus process, Hyperledger uses the PBFT consensus protocol, which offer a lower communication cost for broadcasting messages. So the throughput of Hyperledger blockchain will be higher. In case of crash failure, Hyperledger is affected because PBFT cannot tolerate more than one by three server failure network. PBFT consensus protocol is safe as there is no forking problem. A query answer model based service like Hyperledger is adopted by the supply chains so that the virtual identities of the IoT devices are verified according to their latest activities. So I conclude my presentation that the convergence of IoT and blockchain will be an ultimate way to secure data from processes. The track and trace capability of blockchain applications will provide consumers an abundant trust on the products they buy. That's all from my side. Thank you. Thank you so much, ma'am. That was a wonderful presentation. Uh, next, I like would yeah. next I like to invite uh, Dr. Krishnan Umar Chandran. He's done his bachelor degree in University of Madras, then masters in Pilani, BITS, and then his PhD in Dr. MGR University. And he experienced through the value chain of switch gears, railway roads, passenger cars, industrial values, beverages, building tiles, foodwares, medical, surgical device, and ERP, ITES, etc. Then he also published more than 300 articles. Now I'll, I heartily invite uh, Sir to present his speech. Yeah. <clears throat> Thank you very much. Okay. Uh, can you prompt uh, whether you can see my screen? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Okay. Thank you. So I go ahead, right? You know, I'm hearing too many voices. Uh, can you see my screen or not? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Okay, yes. thank you, thank you. Right, um, I'm Dr. Krishna Numa Chandran. I'm going to, uh, uh, you know, give you uh, my uh, views about uh, blockchain and its implementation and manufacturing because I'm a manufacturing guy. Uh, throughout my experience, uh, though I have uh, 34 years of experience, I've been on the shop floor handling uh, production of products of varied uh, in our requirements. So this um, presentation of mine is concerned more towards manufacturing. When it comes to manufacturing, what happens is every organization has a product or a service that needs to be handled. When uh, you know a product is being manufactured by an organization, it is not for charity. It is, uh, of course, for making money. See, when the real market reality is, see, when an organization makes a goods or practice, service, they give it to a consumer or a customer. This customer, when they are going to use this goods or service, they are going to pay for you. This is the revenue cycle between a company and your custo and the customer. But this customer is vulnerable to be captured by another company, which is going to be your competitor. Your competitor, if he, can, if he or she can give a better value and a better price, then the consumer, the customer, uh, you know, switches over to the, another company. This is how the competition is built in the market. So this is one kind of a loop I'm showing, where the customer takes advantage between company X and company Y. Let's put this scenario per se in a, in, a, in a perspective to be stopped, and then we'll go on with blockchain. And how this is being affected by blockchain is where I'm going to show you uh, more of an illustration. See, you know about blockchain. You know, you should understand how this blockchain came. Blockchain is, came out of a game theory called prisoner's dilemma. Prisoner, when two prisoners are there in a prison, each of them, they can be rational, but they will not cooperate. Even in the best interest, they will not cooperate. 
but they will cooperate only when a desirable outcome is for most of the players or most of the prisoners if this is achieved then the prisoner will co i mean they'll collaborate this is what is called the prisoner's dilemma this is what is being used for the development of a blockchain because people don't trust each other they mistrust each other they are very rational but they don't want to coordinate and they don't want to cooperate with each other to get, you know get out of a jail but then how do they manage is where the the theory which has gone into the creation of this blockchain this is called prisoner's dilemma if you wish to uh, go find yourself to play this you can still more understand how this is being connected to blockchain see everyone were talking about the hashtag you know the cryptographic hash which connects with a large amount of data even uh, the previous speaker was saying uh, database is not the only thing with blockchain but it has a lot of data when you take a public uh, in a blockchain even uh, dr uh, sahu was saying about the distributed ledger there is a lot of things which are being con connected and construed by the untrusted participants see when these participants are there and they are going to create a blockchain a coding you know which is being used by the uh, consorted members then this has to be verified whether it is right or not this is called the automated consensus they use a automated consensus through voting system see when we had the um, uh, you know um, uh, cyber uh, you know we we have currency i don't want to get into uh, how uh, the uh, cyber currency uh, evolved but bitcoin was the one which came out you know using blockchain but they had a process of consensus for proof of work that is in bitcoin you will have a puzzle and you have to solve the puzzle and then you will get into the block but uh, ethereum when they came out they went on with proof of stake you know how many people are being connected and if they all automatically autom i mean they give a consensus to you then you can go on getting into the uh, you know circulation of uh, contracts this circulation of contracts is called the smart contract by ethereum for any blockchain development tool there are three things one what happens in the back end what happens in the front end and how you handle the data in the midware see back end is handled by smart contracts front end is your application and the middleware is how you are coordinating all the joins the nodes and the connects between the contract members this is called the online integrated development environment there are many tools available they are not for today uh, and especially for uh, manufacturing i'll use byudl b u i d l it's you it's nothing but build in the, in the last two letters are you know swapped okay this uh, um, uh, you know um, uh, form uh, i mean the platform is nothing but an extension of ethereum ethereum when it came, when it came out you know it was having a better performance compared to bit, uh, bitcoins it was uh, taking less time it was un, not so complicated like bitcoin and so a lot of people started getting onto ethereum when they came into ethereum then the second state of ethereum came and the third state emerged which is called the cyber miles which is used by e-commerce all e-commerce platforms now are trying to use cyber miles because it's easy because of ethereum connectivity there is a es provider which is nothing but a you know web server and then you have web3 uh, provider for your front end you have your uh, chain id you have your custom gas you have uh, your gas pricing and all these things you know which goes into your wallet the wallet we otherwise call see the decentralized app is one you have a blockchain you create your coding and you connect it to your smart uh, contracts and this smart contracts when it is connected to a d app the decentralized application what it does it it is connected to the file storage it is connected to your shared database and it is also connected to your off chain data services which is nothing but an explorer this is being kept in a local storage along with the wallet because if you are going to have contracts and uh, you know um doing a kind of a physical connectivity you know you want to sell something that means the uh, the return part is revenue so the first uh, uh, i mean uh, 
um, figure which I showed you, it has one way of goods and services and another way of revenue. So both have to be connected, then only manufacturing can have its say. This uh, centralized application, when it takes the you know, wallet, it's called the MetaMask, which is being uh, used by many of these e-commerce people to protect their keys, private keys, their extensions, and the cryptocurrencies. Okay, so to have this, you know, the, my uh, uh, speaker next to me is going to handle this, so I'm not going to touch more about it. But this meta, uh, you know, if you have an opportunity to learn about wallets, then you try to learn MetaMask because this is much more accepted in the uh, e-commerce segments. Further on the languages, you know, when you want to try to learn um, and implement, uh, you know, blockchains, uh, you cannot go with simple Python. The similarity to Python, which is used in Bitcoin, is Viper language. Viper is similar to Python, but it is not same. Why people are not using the non-gender, I mean, the, the gender purpose uh, computer programming is, because if everyone knows the same computer programming, then you cannot protect. So if you want to have, then the smart contract programming always goes with a kind of a modified state to a general programming. And then they go on with a deterministic behavior, using all your virtual uh, machines, which can be VASM or eVASM or whatever it is for taking care of the entire application life cycle from the compiling time, the linking time and the running time. So all these things are the prerequisites for a manufacturing blockchain. And many things for production, what happens is, this is where the behind firewall setup happens. See, when a web server connectivity happens uh, to, uh, to a web and a user profile database for a E3M that is on a broadband, then you have E3M node and E3M node has the private uh, key within it. So you connect it with a passphrase between the web server side and the user profile database, and then you validate it you know, behind the firewall. But if you have a mobile base, in a mobile application, then you have a private key between the uh, uh, web server and the user database straight from your uh, platform. So this kind of a thing, so you can be either you know, using a broadband for uh, handling a, a blockchain uh, manufacturing or a, uh, in a, like a mobile application for a uh, manufacturing block blockchain. See, let me get into the crux of manufacturing. See, in manufacturing, there are two varieties of chains. One is called the big chain and another is called the small chain. The big chain is nothing but you use for the macro levels, like you know, either you buy things for your organization or you sell things out of your organization. These are the you know, supply chain management, which you do. But not everything is going to be on your supply chain sites where you have a lot of small things like what you do uh, you know, as part of process, as, as part of uh, product, or for your services, whatever you do, these are small chains that get onto the uh, manufacturing organizations. See, be whatever a block blockchain is, a blockchain has these three radical inputs like a distributed database. It's nothing but you have two uh, or more files located in different sites. Now, it is the same thing, but in a different sites or in different networks, these are connected. This is called the distributed database. Then you have records of transactions. You know whatever happens, whatever you have agreed between the stakeholders, there are everything being stored, and then it is shared only among the participants. Not others can get it. This is the feature that makes blockchain acceptable by the people who create it and get into it. Now coming on to blockchain. See blockchain. Why you need to have this as an extra thing when you already have us in a manufacturing chain already done? See, existing supply chains in manufacturing are vulnerable to fraud. Resiliency, you know, you have uh, problems with hacking malware, server functions, uh, you know, network failures, fraud or uh, whatever, human errors or whatever it is. How to come over it? Because many accountability in uh, the normal legacy systems are not there. And in blockchain, you can also handle the inefficiencies because, because inefficiencies slow your flow of products. When your slow, uh, in a product flow slow, uh, slows down, then your revenue also slows down. So to take care of your inefficiencies and cost, 
blockchain is being volunteered by manufacturing organizations to work, get into you know to understand simple for a manufacturing it's a block it's nothing but a coding what you do for a transaction between your you know stakeholders which has a database which is having a connectivity to cryptography so that the cyber secured block the content is being shared amongst the members that's all for manufacturing why should they get into it because if we, they have a lot of competitiveness amongst themselves and they it's going to create a lot of job opportunities and inclusive growth in trade in integration of economic activities or in global markets or networks that can add value to the global chain then organizations with a lot of confidence get into implementing the uh, you know global um, manufacturing blockchain in addition to this last two years were uh, more impetus for this kind of a digital deployments and there were a lot of exploring uh, realizations added on to the value chain handling between end to end and when everyone was stuck at home this was the only connectivity or mobile uh, activity that happened so everything happened through digital uh, deployments and so the blockchain had its easy acceptance amongst stakeholders so now coming on to the use case like you know why businesses get onto it see businesses uh, though they wanted within themselves they used this excuse they said customers have high expectations and if they have any kind of a problem or to resolve their issues we need to have traceability and when customers individuals they wanted to have personalized interactions and for this the legacy system is not capable so we will go for blockchain and they easily picked up one thing called circular economy because when i pay i pay to a trusted member and that trusted member responds to me via service so this is the basis on which the manufacturing flow started it's nothing but a lot of data volumes of data stakeholders are more distribution channels are more legal and safety issues are there multi factorial management issue all these things are got into cloud and this cloud has a dependable data quality and this is overcoming the barriers and then you have a digital deployment this is the one which is making you as a sustainable blockchain transformation to get this there are a lot of business models any business model using a blockchain has these four components one called leverage connect transform transact leverage is nothing but you have a data you also have additional data this how are you going to connect you are going to connect it to your assets to improve your efficiencies at various levels multiple levels transformation is you have an existing process and an end to end information system is already there you want to go with value addition across the chain this is where the transformation comes it's not getting on with the inefficiencies or unproductive works it's it's going on to boost your productivity and get on to a better efficiency and efficacy levels for this the transaction what they have chosen is the blockchain blockchain has all content registered time stamped it is published with a unique symbol it is blocked by a unique hashtag and if you want to attempt anything in transaction you have to change the previous one and that completely change your uh, uh, to a different block so you can't do anything going back and changing if at all you have to do changes you have to do prospectively and not retro uh, pro prospectively the earlier ones you cannot change so this way business models became much flourishing by adopting novel approaches like because they are now getting an authenticated kind of a transaction or connection between the members and there is no intermediaries like you know if i have to uh, you know communicate with you uh, for a uh, you know connection of a, a sale i can communicate to you directly i don't go through an intermediary and so our productivity of me producing and selling and you receiving and being happy all are met this is where the commercial aspect goes on with a novel approach so blockchain is being accepted and when you hear anything for value in blockchain there are three capabilities they are driving out one is called the creation of value the delivery of value and the capture of value 
what do they mean by creation is nothing but you have resources resources are man machine material all five m's and then you have technology which is facilitating the current world of uh, you know connectivity of businesses and then the networks to whom you are going to satisfy so ultimately you need to satisfy the customer so the value creation is established then they go on with a value delivery see every customer when they come to buy a product or they going to use our service they means they have some problem it means you have to give them a solution so you need to classify your customers in different segments relationships and promotion channels and then you deliver it there you there you get the authenticated you know kind of a service being delivered or a product being delivered to your customer the last part is your capture capture is nothing but a value capture is nothing but a long term you know thinking of a firm for a development like today you can make a sale but you need to have a continued uh, in a kind of a, re uh, a relationship that's where you get a revenue generation and accordingly you go with cost structure it can be either discounting or incentivizing or whatever it is you do it so these are the things which create value and this is where blockchain facilitates through the programming which uh you know is being facilitated ultimately if an organization has to be successful in a digitalized market because uh, our product is seen by everyone uh, my, you know rates you know prices are being so sold seen by everyone but pricing alone is not a de in a de decision making factor or a success factor for an organization it is an uh, making an organization to be continually adjusting to the market demands this is possible through you know being competitive business delivery through blockchain that is where blockchain is being understood and accepted now coming on see when it comes to money we have all seen currencies being floating as uh, the real market uh, you know money but uh, you know after de uh, you know demonetization even in india we see money transactions is more digitally the next level is called the currency cryptocurrencies morgan chase jp morgan has already gone into it goldman uh, goldman sachs has gone into it city uh, group has gone into it ripple santander western union tpycom uh, credit uh, swiss visa docsign all these people have gone into crypto we are thinking it is wrong but there is a way how to get into crypto why they get into crypto and use it for stocks and uh, you know transactions of monetary values is for reducing settlement times and cost so this is one which makes the customer feel happy and it increases the transparency and the auditability of the transaction so that is the reason these you know uh, big majors have gone into using the cryptocurrencies and blockchain is one of the thing which facilitates easy transaction of money and physical goods coming on to manufacturing see if i make products it means i need to make money the money part is handled already so how would a manufacturing organization get in manufacturing organizations have gone in with you know finding out a uh, you know reason like how to weed out the counterfeit there are a lot of things which are duplicating a a, a brand so ford bmw honda and gm they created a blockchain which is called the mobility open blockchain initiative mobi for working on the vehicles and part tracking you know if anything which happens with their spare parts see in markets there is one thing called oem original equipment manufacturing and then second is called the replacement manufacturing money is more on replacement manufacturing and not in oems so this is where these majors automotive majors have gone in and in addition to it they created another project which is on the blockchain which is called the vehicle identity by giving birth certificate so identifying the maintenance history now if you have a car or a motorbike you know you if you go to the showroom they can uh, type your number and they can tell you when you have registered uh, what kind of a services has been done what has not been done you know everything is registered see you get all your uh, transactions being handled by the own uh, the, the organization which manufactures similarly daimler daimler with its uh, in a counterpart in singapore which is called the ocean protocol they have done a decentralized data exchange what they did was 
they started sh sharing the supply chain data to their manufacturing hubs. So you be anywhere in the world, you know, you do a manufacturing for Daimler or its partners, you get a better value because we source from this area and you go to this person and he'll give you this best rate. So that you pool all your people together. This is where Daimler and Ocean Protocol did. And then came GM and uh, BMW are now going on with self-driving car data. Where this car is, where it's going and who is using it and all those data, everything is being handled by them. Okay, next, manufacturing alone cannot do. There's a lot of things which goes on. You know, once you manufacture, you need to move it across the world. You know, import and exports happen. So the freight logistics is one which uses a lot of blockchain. They use a lot of standardizations. They use a lot of custom transactions and then automation because the process and data, the tamper proof and trustworthiness are all smooth in an international transport network because everything is on the web. So it's not through other sources. So they can quickly transact, identify and get it to a trustworthy uh, a person who who's initiated this contract. Coming on to the services. See, the services uh, organization like manufacturing are a uh, you know, money spending activity. They are the ones who use a lot of sourcing uh, from the manufacturing organizations. S7 Airlines uses E3M to reduce these settlement times. You know, earlier, uh, the problems between the airline agents and uh, the customers were taking about 14 days. Now it's only about 15 seconds. Winding tree decentralized B2B in you know, a business to business transactions by removing the mid agents you know, middlemen were removed. Similar thing, removal of middlemen was also done by American Airlines. You know, they started giving corporate discounts to uh, you know, uh, corporates which are directly connected with American Airlines. Similar, not leaving this, Singapore Airlines picked up this and then they started using, I'll give you miles turned into currency. So a digital valley was created. And then we had Salesforce working on CRM and then Filecoin hosting files, decentralizing S3 uh, from Amazon Web Services. Like this, a lot of things, even by the time I complete the speech, there'll be a lot more things happening. See, this is a intelligent era of uh, uh, the manufacturing base. Not only manufacturing, any physical commodity being transacted and a, a cryptocurrency being received or a digital currency being received because cryptocurrencies are not much being accepted by many governments, but they cannot keep on like this because if you accept digital, then tomorrow you're going to accept crypto. In the end, blockchain is nothing but a database. It is connected to a cryptography where you, connect, you cannot break your contract retroactively. In the past, what you have agreed is still in vogue and if you want to change anything, you can do it prospectively and you can go ahead. So the promise is ensured by the stakeholders with the organizations. And so people are happy to use blockchain. Thank you very much for listening. Thank you, sir, for your valuable words. Now I, now I wish to call upon Ms. L. Priya, who has completed her bachelor's degree in computer science engineering and master's degree in computer science engineering. And her area of interest are computer networks, natural language processing, blockchain technology, and IoT. She has worked as assistant professor in Coimbatore Institute of Technology, Coimbatore, Siamar Institute of Technology, Bangalore, and currently working in Manariaman Institute of Technology, Eero. She is involved in blockchain technology special laboratory, and her achievements are recognized for giving consequently 100% academic results, received a special appreciation for best contribution during NAAC and AMP NBA audit, winner in technical track content guru of Inspire Faculty Exchange Award 2013 conducted by Infosys Campus Panel. I cordially invite you to present your speech, ma'am. Uh, thank you, Kaushika, for your wonderful and uh, very uh, interesting introduction. Okay. Uh, is my voice very clearly audible? Yes, ma'am. So, yeah, thank you, uh, participants. 
so let's uh, dive into the topic now all, all my previous uh, speakers uh, they were so interestingly uh, was telling about various applications various use cases and the basis of blockchain so let me uh, slightly go a little ahead of blockchain the basics of blockchain and into and into the development and projects that can be deployed using blockchain so now uh, in, on the screen you can see something called as ethereum and smart contracts so i hope this uh, terms are kind of uh, uh, familiar familiar to you so now uh, what is ethereum ethereum is uh, um, it is again a framework to uh, deploy projects or to create projects in smart contract it is the term that we use uh, this this is how an academ uh, academician can understand in ethereum is uh, and a little more about it uh, it is also a financial uh, services that can be offered so now uh, let me uh, create clearly define you what a bitcoin and what an ethereum or what a blockchain in, in bitcoin and what an ethereum is okay so uh, hope you all know the applications of blockchain is uh, nothing but bitcoin and it is purely a, a digital money that can be uh, transacted without pay any intermediary payment providers or so so that is only application of blockchain i mean only application of bitcoin that is only application that and that can be only done with the help of bitcoin but ethereum is not so ethereum is a programmable and you it is not only something which is with the respect to digital money it is also uh, to be able to build and deploy many decentralized application on its uh, network so i think i hope this is clear so uh, ethereum is programmable and also you can deploy many decentralized application on its network wherein bitcoin can only uh, do digital transaction and digital money transaction or we can say it is a digital uh, cryptocurrency sort of okay so now ethereum being programmable uh, means uh, you can actually build apps that uses blockchain to store data and to control uh, what your applications can do actually uh, so this generally results in general purpose blockchain and that can be programmed to do anything and everything uh, as there is no limit to what uh, ethereum can do it allows for greater innovation to happen on ethereum network as well while uh, bitcoin is only a payment network ethereum is more likely a marketplace of financial services games social networks and other apps that respect your privacy also it, you cannot or it cannot censor you also so ethereum uh, let us say bitcoin if you say you generally call it as btc or you can also define it as bitcoin wherein ethereum is also a native currency we generally call ethereum's cryptocurrency as ether we uh, when we collect ethers we generally don't uh, tell it as uh, tell it fully as ether we call it as eth eth okay so it is purely a digital and you can send it to anyone anywhere across the world instantly okay. so we, i mean to say without any third party interference across so the supply of eth is in control by any government or any company it is purely a decentralized and completely transparent environment Uh, so generally we also tell it as uh, we when when there is new coins introduced uh, uh, in ethereum we generally call it as tokens and generally we call it as tokens are created by any uh, stakeholders who uses uh, this network or who securely uses this network so every action on the ethereum network requires a certain amount of computational power from the previous speakers obviously you could have uh, clearly understood the concept that uh, whatever that we wanted to deploy or whatever that we wanted to use in blockchain we should actually uh, compute uh, i mean miners will generally mine the uh, computation cost etc okay so so similarly for ethereum also we wanted to have for ethereum also we actually wanted to have uh, a small amount of ethers or eth that should be deployed okay or uh, a eth or gas fee it is actually required for any transaction that happens in your uh, ethereum network is my screen visible
we are still okay. seeing what is ethereum yeah 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 it's it's that okay so now uh, across ethereum uh, as i would like to show a demo on what ethereum and how projects are deployed in both public uh, blockchain and private blockchain uh, we actually wanted these components to be these components to be uh, necessarily needed for any deployment of public and private blockchain so generally we wanted a client uh, to make something in the block okay so what the client is actually we wanted to have a digital signature we wanted to have private keys and wallets what this digital signature is digital signature is generally uh, you pre as the concept you pre know that we wanted to have cryptography concept introduced here cryptography is basically a public and private key transaction i mean public and private key encryption so whatever we do uh, a user's identity users log in into a network everything is digital uh, digital signature is required for it so for digital signature we actually wanted to have a private keys to encrypt or to uh, add it to a network or whatever i'll just show you a demo and tell you uh, where the private key and digital signature is uh, used there okay so for everything as you people know when we want to buy something we have to have uh, money and we will hold the money in uh, wallets similarly in ethereum as i told you ethers we need a gas fee and we need to have ethers to it we wanted to have wallets uh, say for that we i am just uh, going to show you something called as metamask wallet there so that wallet is also requ required as clients next smart contract this is very important in case of ethereum wherein in uh, uh, create this is one unique feature in blockchain that is nothing but uh, smart contract uh, smart contract is very um, to clearly make you understand smart contract is actually uh, the terms and conditions we sign up or we tick in when we uh, when we try to sign in to any new network or when we sign up in, into a new google account we click uh, click on to that uh, uh, terms and condition no? so it is like we agree upon some terms and we proceed uh, that that is a kind of smart contract and uh, we will be using it in our blockchain so for the smart contract these are the required things we wanted to have storage state transaction contract accounts that was discussed in previous uh, uh, speakers so it is like for example if i wanted to make a person to uh, make a person to eligible for vote my condition should uh, should be a person should be uh, greater than 18 years so i should write a contract stating that whoever uh, tries to log into my voting system should be of age 18 and above okay so that is a contract that i wanted to deploy to proceed further that is actually called a smart contract and we for this we have uh, different languages so one the one uh, very uh, interesting programming language that we write in smart con smart contract is uh, solvit okay so we have a clients we we had we have additional signatures and so on and we also uh, created a smart contract now when this is done obviously i should have node to deploy my uh, a program so that node is actually uh, it, it can be either a local node it can be infura it, or it can be alchemy see only these three are the place where you deploy your projects this node can also be a tool we can say okay so uh, the i mean i'm coming on from node to tools tools that will that we can use it for running a program and creating a project is actually etherscan uh it can be remix id and we wanted to have a metamask to link between the id i mean the environment to a uh, transaction so we want to have a metamask wallet so when this is done obviously we wanted to test our network that we will be doing it in either of uh, coven or go eril or uh, cefolia or ganache okay so let's see deep into it in the demo that i'll be showing in shortly so now what a smart contract is hope you all uh, would have clearly understood what smart contract is it is a term that we sign in or we agreement that we sign on okay so generally uh, in your in the uh, bitcoin the, or the previous applications they pe people write script to it and they will be uh, that that is nothing that is only thing that any uh, bitcoin has 
okay now when you wanted to write a smart contract and deploy any industrial applications or academic projects or any create any decentralized applications we have to have a programming language that is nothing but a solidity and using solidity you will be writing smart contracts which means you write a uh, terms and conditions or you write a policy and you execute it that is the only thing that you will be doing it with respect to deploy any smart I mean, anything on your ethereum network okay for example uh, uh, as the previous example i have given you something like when a person is above 18 uh, you will be able to uh, i mean call your own okay this is one other example it is like uh, generally when do we pay our loan it is like you have to pay your loan on a specific time of the month okay when you wanted to create a smart contract for it Uh, these are the things that you essentially wanted say first you have to understand your problem clearly only then you will be able to write your smart contract clearly okay so this the problem business problem of this loan contract is you should ensure to pay your uh, i mean loan some uh, some specific day of a month okay and it repeats every month so you should ensure timely repayments of your loan okay that is your uh, clear understanding of your problem statement and once we understand the problem we should know who are the clients okay are the parties that is involved that is nothing but any of the banks okay i have just listed here sid or sbi whatever okay so the network participant will be i should have the banks that i pay loan and also i should link it to my or link it to the rbi those are the network participants in the network these are the people that i actually wanted uh to uh participate in my blockchain so all my blocks in the blockchain will have uh, either the either of the banks and rbi okay so my pre uh, prerequisites for that is and sorry for that okay prerequisite is uh, we should be able to i mean we should actually need to access the calendar and its respective uh, time facilities all such things okay so this keeps repeating every month so it is like let us assume i when i say i have to pay loan on 15th of every month the calendar should keep triggering every month that is what is the contract that i have to write for uh, creating this particular projects okay so now the, these are the very essential thing essential thing that is required to write a smart contract so we should also understand the business logic and go, go further so now on deploying uh, a smart contract on blockchain is what going to I, i'm just going to show you here i am using remix ide and metamask to show my uh, uh, demo okay so now just give me a minute so that i can log into my uh, uh, remix okay so this is the remix page i when i wanted to show you i i we it is it is like uh, open source it is online uh, okay so i just type let me just type remix ide in google you get a page like this okay so uh, here you have so many documentations of our projects and all uh, so here uh, remix ide see i'm just logging into this remix ide and entering into this particular page of my uh, 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 projects okay so here uh, when you log in every single uh, comp compartments will be uh, you will have to uh, make it enter into the remix ide and you will have to create your workspace see i have already created so it it will be of the whole things will be blank you will have to create your workspace by clicking on this particular workspace and and, and as i have a workspace i i'm not uh, creating it again so this is this is a, this is a layout i i want to show you what i thought i can show you a very simple uh, uh, program what i am trying to do is i am uh, you people actually know about the concept called as uh, set and get and uh, which means i uh, take a unit and uh, store that unit is my concept okay so i'm just uh, getting it with respect to set function and, and storing it and posting it with respect to get function is uh, the logic okay so here uh, uh, see uh, when i uh this mit license is generally what uh, when when it own uses what happen is uh,
sometimes my my program will not be deploying or my program will not be running because of license issues so this mit license is actually required for uh, anything that you do with, with respect to your uh, what um, remix id with respect to any block any uh, compilation of smart contract okay so this uh, pragma is already is the sol uh, is uh, generally the name or your uh, um uh, it it is it is the required the required thing and the solid the solidity will have specific uh, range or specific uh, up upgradations okay so my solidity programming of and with respect to this particular program will be compiled only only between 0.4 i mean uh, something which is uh, greater than 0.4 and less than 0.7 i cannot take any as this is uh, remix id is an online compiler my compiler version will be only between 4 to 7 it cannot exceed uh, than 7 or it cannot uh, be less than 4 okay so that is what uh, the version uh, explanation is given with respect to this pragma solidity and the version is explained here and the solidity program will start with contract and the name of the uh, contract that i'm writing it's nothing but simple storage these are the data types and the uh, uh, variable name okay i'm just using a function or uh, to set a value and this is publicly i mean this is your uh, programming okay when you study the solidity programming language you will be able to understand so uh, this variable will hold the value that is being given in the set function and one more function will help me to uh, return this uh, stored value to my uh, stored data with respect to get function this is simple program so my uh, my or uh, the uh, smart contract that i write here is uh, i uh, my smart contract will run when i take the value from the user and give it to the stored data variable okay this is a simple uh, uh, smart contract for simple storage okay so i have written a program now generally when it is any other programming language be it c uh, be it python be it javascript be it java what we do we run the program we compile the program and run the program the only difference is here uh, let me tell you i wanted everybody to have an attention here so it is like i have written a program okay here uh, there are a number of things that that we have it here what i am trying to do is i am just uh, trying to uh, compile it okay okay so i have just compiled it as the version is uh, 0.6 i don't have any issue with that okay this is see this is the version uh, updating compiler version to match current contract file pro, uh, pragma 0.62 see it is like there are n number of uh, versions of the compiler my version is between 4 and 7 so i can pick anything uh, between 4 and 7 and it is already done so i do not bother for it when it is when it doesn't compile say my i have to check on to the version of my compiler okay now once it is compiled okay now what should i do is now what should i do is uh i should again uh, uh deploy my program deploy my program is nothing but uh, i should as as this is being i wanted to show you demo on a uh, private blockchain question sir uh, yes uh, dr hema uh, priya is facing an issue in her in her laptop so now she will raise okay. hand via her mobile phone kindly make uh, the no um, yeah okay sir yeah yeah So kindly make her unmute sir she has joined uh, she, she can unmute us no no she can't sir 
ट्रांसक्शन for deploying and running the transaction uh, as in the slide I have, we, i have told you that we have to pick on uh, any uh, uh, what uh, any uh, it's like wallet that we have to pick and we have to uh, tran for every transaction that we make there will be some amount of money that is being detected uh, money in the sense here we call it as eth okay so now uh, if you can see i have given deploy uh, deploy contact and there are many environments here okay so it uh, something called as remix uh, vm london uh, berlin and also many things are there okay so uh, when krishan sir was discussing he was telling also about foundry provider also, also uh, so many things okay now what i am trying to do here is i am taking something called as injected provider uh, clicking on to injected provider and this injected provider will help me to Uh, uh, compile or to deploy my project with the help of metamask that is available here okay so now uh, this metamask will have see this uh, i would also like to tell something about this metamask quickly uh, just download metamask pin it to your uh, uh, i mean create an account of metamask and pin it to your uh, i mean i mean what you say google chrome it will work fine but what uh exactly what this uh, metamask wallet will have is it will have it will help you to have uh, ethereum mainnet this ethereum mainnet is actual transaction that is happening with respect to cryptocurrency okay so this will generally when you log into ethereum website you will be able to know what this uh, ethereum mainnet will work or such things but we here we are not going to uh, get connected to this uh, mainnet instead i am i am just uh, going to use ganache go early and the other uh, uh, what Uh, test networks okay so uh, i actually uh, to show you all demo i actually connected some uh, ether in the morning itself so that that has something called as 0.09 ethers are available in my account as of now but actually how do you get how do you collect your ethers is here if you see you have uh, uh, account i will be cl clicking on to this account and get my see when you click on i have uh, my account i'm just copying this account this account uh, Uh, number is actually hashed value as the sir and the previous uh, speakers were discussing they told you something about the hash value or not so every account is hashed you will not be able to identify my account itself so this is the hashed account that is being given to me and i'll be using this account number create i mean collect the ether from different test networks this is a free as of uh, uh, as of a, a few decentralized applications this is uh, for free to test something and this is being a test network you can collect uh, up to 0.09 ether a day that is with respect to this go early test num test uh, network okay so now what i will do is i will actually deploy my contract now by selecting metamask okay hope you you, you can all uh, th there is a, something about 0.09 go early and i am deploying it okay when i deploy it what actually happens here is okay what actually happens here is you can see the transaction that is happening see i have asked for deploying so when i wanted to deploy a, a smart contract i should pay a fee that is what is listed here okay so uh, i can either reject the reject the transaction or i can also confirm the transaction so now i should be spending about 0.0024 eth to make this transaction happen so when i confirm this transaction only then my program will get executed hope this is clear for everybody so deploy when i give de uh, deploy the de for uh, deploying any smart contract in my network okay i should pay for it okay paying that is through wallet called as metamask wallet hope this is clear for you all okay i have deployed it now it will take some time because uh, currently you have no contract uh, was there now a contract is created i'm just clicking on to this particular deploy i'm just checking what all is deployed 
so now i have deployed something called as uh, my uh, my contract name is uh, uh, simple storage so clicking on to the simple storage see you can see set and get function the program is compiled actually okay so uh, i am giving a unit of 100 to store so i am setting this okay for this also a uh, transaction is required so everything is uh, transacted with the help of some p that's nothing but amount plus gas fee so i'm just giving a confirmation here okay I, when i confirm okay uh, my i am just set 100 100 unit now i wanted to call this back using get function uh, uh, get function see it will be deployed okay so okay now just give me a minute it is taking some time to load okay see if you see i have given 100 units and using this get the 100 units are transacted to my get function is it clear for everybody this is what is done publicly and this is about a uh, public blockchain deployment hope this is clear for you all it's a public blockchain it's open to any anyone across doing this projects okay doing any project uh, hope the concept of public and private blockchain is clear for you now i am done with uh, public blockchain now let me explain this con same concept with respect to uh, private blockchain so private blockchain uh, now getting back to my environment i am just changing my environment to ganache provider that is a uh, what private blockchain okay now uh, there is uh, there is a problem here something called as ganache endpoint is only uh, six i mean http and uh, your i mean your ip address is something with respect to 854 8545 this is not actually ganache's uh, port is what is mentioning here now where do, where do i change my port i should have ganache provider ganache provider account i mean link to my account okay now that is where I have something called as localhost 84 uh, what 8545 and this is actually not uh, the account that is linked okay now what should I do is just give me a minute to take me some time okay so I have a ganache here my I, I it is because i've already uh, added ganache also uh, and this is happening now how do i add ganache is ganache is actually the pri uh, private blockchain i should go on to something called as add network uh, add network and give ganache name chain id all such things that is nothing but here it is it, it is there okay i downloaded ganache and installed it in my system i have something called as i would also like to show just give me a minute okay here is my okay here is my i'm sorry for that okay here i have my network name network name is ganache rpc url is what i, I should pick from my uh, ganache that is here it's it's actually here on the uh, network it's 7545 I should pick this or I should again take it fully. Uh, okay, this is this is already there. So uh, I am just taking the URL and I, have, and I have to paste it here. Chain ID, I'm not pasting it. I'm not pasting it here. I'm just explaining you because it is already done. Okay, uh, network name is Ganache. RPC URL is what I'm pink, picking it from this respective uh, Ganache's uh, website. And also, I have something called as network ID. That is nothing but my chain ID. I'm just putting it here. Uh, the name of my symbol will be ETH. So, collecting it and saving it. When I save it, I get this provision uh, entered entering on my Ganache site. Okay. So, now this is done. Okay. So, I hope this is clear. Any doubt? Okay. So, now, now I should have my uh, MetaMask. Uh, with Ganache here, and I've collected uh, ETH. I'll tell. I'll also would like to tell you how I collected ETH. See, I have 99 ETH here. Okay. Now, how di how did I get 99 ETH? Is I cannot search as like a blo uh, public blockchain. 
I have to um, in public blockchain or in any of the test networks. What I did was I am just taking the respective name of it, browse it in my I mean surf it in my uh, Google, get each transacted to it. Where wherein I get only point uh, some ETH I can collect. Wherein in this private network I can get hundred ETH and all. Okay, how do I add that is uh, in this uh, Ganache site there is a key here. Yes. So that key is nothing but the private key or digital signature for this particular account address. This these accounts are different nodes which is which is uh, acting as a private network to deploy your projects. Okay. Oh, this is clear. I have around uh, around seven or eight uh, private networks giving each to deploy your different applications. Okay. So now let us take. I have collected this uh, uh, private key. I'm just copying this private key. What I do? Uh, I use this particular uh, MetaMask and I in import it to my account. I'm just pasting it here and importing it. When I import, I get 100 ETH. Okay, this is a new account that is created for this particular account, wherein uh, for transaction. So, hope this is clear. Now, what I do, I do very similar thing of what. Uh, uh, public and private blockchain here is so now when I come back to this program again, I should go compile this program for compiling my compile range should be compile range should be between 4.4 and 0.7 but here it is actually 0.8 so I cannot compile it change my version of the what version of any I, I can pick any version of uh, uh, what uh, compiler compile this program. Okay. Okay, now uh, compilation is you have not any you have not set the script to run. Oh, so this is okay. This is how I compile. Okay, now I deploy my contract. For deploying, I should again pick my environment as I'm trying to deploy it in a private blockchain. Uh, here I have I have chosen my private blockchain to be Ganache provider. So selecting on Ganache provider. And in the Ganache provider, my network ID was 577777, but my port address is here it is 75 and 45. So uh, using that 75 and 45 for my uh, Ganache provider, I should change it, change that port address to uh, 7545 instead of the other previous one. Okay, now I will be able to deploy it. Okay, now when I deploy it, Okay, uh, wherein in previous public public blockchain, I this has popped in and uh, you were able to see the uh, reduction of your ether. But here, as it is, it is not test network. It is a private network. We will not be able to see it. I'll show you uh, where, uh, the decreasing of your ether count and all. Now, uh, what uh, deploying it is done. Now, what I should do is uh, the contract is already deployed. Now, let's take I give some somewhere around five thousand set. And finally, get my account. See, it is again transacted here. Okay, this is how a public and private blockchains transaction happens through uh, what uh, smart contracts and solidity programming. And finally, I would also like to show that the account is uh, uh, decremented, wherein the account was the previous one. This actually, okay, uh, wherein as I have. Uh, Taken two three accounts, I am not able to show you with respect to the account that was uh, changed. Okay, so when I change it everywhere, everything will change. But here, I I think the whole uh, 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 contraction and the setting and uh, getting you can see. Okay, so this is all about uh, uh, deploying a pro smart contract in any of the nodes in the public and private blockchain. Also, with respect to my uh, uh, what MetaMask wallet, uh, we have a number of uh, wallets. This is one very uh, most widely used across uh, wallets. Okay, so now uh, this is this is all about uh, the project deployment. I wanted to say you, and uh, being it the first session, being it the introduction, I am just showing you a very simple uh, uh, smart contracts wherein with few more. Uh, Examples and few more interesting uh, example deployment of smart contract deployment. We'll we'll again meet up in next. Uh, 
a session, very interesting session. Thank you for the wonderful opportunity. Thank you, Priya. Thank you, ma'am, for your valuable speech. I will, now, now I would like to call Dr. B. Srig Vignahema, ma'am, who has completed her B.Tech in Computer Science Engineering, M.Tech in Computer Science Engineering, and PhD in Information and Communication Engineering. And she has worked as research analyst for two years in Elysium Group of Companies India. And she has worked as full-time research scholar for four years under Anna University Chennai CEG Campus India. And she is working as assistant professor, senior grade level to a department of Engineer information technology and head of blockchain technology special laboratory from August 2020 in Manariaman Institute of Technology. She is in charge of blockchain special laboratory and member of BOS, NAAC criteria 2, NBA critician 7, IET, flying squad, discipline committee, anti-ragging committee, paper evaluator, oil superintendent, Women Welfare Committee, Assistant Governor and Coordinator. She has certification in Blockchain Enterprise Executive, Ethereum Blockchain Executive, Hyperledger Fabric Executive, Ethereum Blockchain Application. And she has published a journal article in Springer Publication USA and a journal article in Billy Publisher. And she has published book chapter in Springer Publisher. And she has won Best Paper Award in International Conference and in National Conference. Her idea was shortlisted in Leelawadi Award. And she has won Best Mentor Award for International Competition and signed MOU for BCT Lab Special Laboratory with Industry. And she is mentor for winners of Government Takeathon with a cash prize of 50,000 and mentor for finalists of Toycathon and semi finalists of Smart India Hackathon. I heartily welcome you to deliver your speech, ma'am. Hello, everyone. Thank you so much, Priya Kaushikashi, for the wonderful introduction. And I'm very grateful for the World Resource Webinar team to give this wonderful and great opportunity to showcase my knowledge to the others. And thank you, sir, Rakrishnan, sir, for the special thank you for you. Thank you very much. Yeah, my screen is visible to everyone and my voice is audible to everyone. Am I right? Yes, thank you, Nandini. And uh, yeah, so the previous session was very interesting about Ethereum and the smart contract. And uh, I'm going to dig into the title of NFT, which is the non-fungible tokens. And this non-fungible token is an application of Ethereum blockchain, where this Ethereum blockchain is a chain of this uh, non-fungible tokens. And it is being one of the popular among uh, the internet today. And I'm going to show how it's been uh, and what are the things I'm going to uh, share with you today. And the agenda of the sessions are what are the NFTs and the key characteristics of NFT and how can we create the NFTs and is the possibilities that everyone can create the NFTs and the popular NFT projects and where to buy and sell the NFTs. And finally, I will show one of the popular NFT marketplace to create, sell, and buy your own uh, NFTs. Let me move on to the first agenda, that is what are NFTs. So as I said to you before, the NFTs are non-fungible tokens. And the NFTs are the tokens that we can use to uh, represent the ownership of the unique items. Uh, they let us uh, tokening, uh, tokenizing the things like it might be the art, the collectibles, and even the real estate is being the tokenized thing. Okay? And the ownership of an asset is secured by the Ethereum blockchain, as you said before, and no one can modify the record of the ownership or uh, they can uh, neither copy nor paste a new NFT into the existence. So the NFT, again, is an economic term that you could use to describe the things like your furniture or a song file or your computer, right? So these things are not interchangeable, am I right? So for other items, because they have the unique properties, so the fungible items are uh, the interchangeable one. So you need to feel the difference between the fungible and non-fungible items. So the fungibles, on the other hand, we can be exchanged. 
because their value it defines uh, them rather than uh, their unique properties. I will give the example for this uh, fungible token. So the best example you uh, see visualized, uh, visualized in uh, Ethereum blockchain, uh, which the previous session has a handover, and that is the E. And that is being uh, in the form of the dollars in the uh, main network instead of the test network. So that all the ETH or the dollars or the fungible one, because it can be exchanged, right? So it can be exchanged between uh, one uh, network to the another network. Uh, because if there is a one ETH or a one dollar USD, so it can be easily exchangeable for another uh, one ETH or a one USD. So that is what I'm coming to portray here about the NFTs with the Ethereum, okay? So NFTs with joint hand or with the Ethereum, it will solve some of the problems uh, that exist in the internet today. As everything becomes uh, more digital, there is a need to replicate the properties of the physical items, mm -hmm. right? Uh, the uniqueness of the uh, digital art or digital assets, okay, then a scarcity and the proof of ownership is an important factor while we're going for the digital asset, right? So not to mention that the digital items, it often uh, only work in the context of their product. Uh, for example, you can uh, you can sell or resell an uh, MP3 or the iTunes, right? So you have to purchase, you will purchase those uh, MP3 and you will uh, uh, have it with you. You can't resell it and you can't exchange with one company's loyal point, right? So so this is being the real-time example of this NFT where the company's loyalty points can't be exchanged for the another platform trades even if there is a market for it. Okay, so I'm saying the non-fungible tokens might be a, a digital art. So the digital art will be in the form of the chips and the collectibles. Collectibles in the sense you can uh, create your own collections uh, like the images or your art or your painting. So uh, that type of uh, uh, things will come under this collectibles. And comes the music. It might be MP3 and the videos, MP4 files. Okay, you can uh, share all this digital arts in this NFT. Then comes the real world items. So real world items takes place as a deeds to a car and tickets to a real world event. And then comes the tokenized invoices. So you all come up this uh, come up with this uh, uh, legal documents and signatures and so more, right? So lots and lots more options to get uh, creative with. So that is what we need to know about this NFTs and how it is being uh, uh, correlated with our uh, digital life. Okay. So I will give some of the examples of NFT. So in this NFT world, it is real, relatively very new to us, right? So the scope of this NFT is anything that is unique that needs uh, uh, the provable ownership. And some popular example of this NFT that exists today to help me to get the ideas or the unique digital artwork uh, where I have the uh, uh, sneakers or the game item and yes, say so. Everything has its own website and the web page. You can get collected in your uh, search of your Google, or you can come across with your uh, Twitter or the Insta. So where you can see the unique digital artwork and the game item, and even the ticket that gives you access to an event or a coupon. So that is being a best example for the NFT. Okay. So then comes the, um, the real world goods and the, your degree certificate is one of the uh, best example where we have uh, the NFT creation certificate creation in our uh, special laboratory too. And then comes to uh, to the digital identity. So wherever we are, we have our digital identity. Uh, for example, in India, we have the digital identity as an uh, Aadhaar card. So likewise, uh, every country has their own digital identity for their uniqueness. So that will come under this NFT example. So if they are involved in the NFT, they can do something uh, better than the uh, current uh, centralized one. Okay. So then comes to how it works and how uh, it's been uh, created. And you have too many queries like whether this, this will be a secure one, whether this will be an uh, Mm -hmm. uh, easy one to hope up with. So these all kind of NFTs are different from the ERC20 tokens. Um, you could came up with the previous session with the Ethereum blockchain where they have used the tokens, right? So that tokens are come under this ERC, that is ERC20. 
So it is a technical standard for the fungible token that is created uh, using the Ethereum blockchain. And it has a difference with the fungible token, okay? So whether it can't be interchangeable and uh, uh, with uh, other tokens, and it is a well-known non-fungible tokens, okay? So here the non uh, well-known non-fungible tokens are not interchangeable. I will show in the next slide of the key characteristics of this NFT. Okay? So let me move on to the next. Uh, and the key characteristics of NFT. So one of the uh, key characteristics is indivisibility. Indiv indivisibility in the sense, so you can't uh, devise or divisible the NFTs, non-fungible tokens, okay? Once you have created, you will become the owner, okay? You, and in NFT, uh, NFT have the only one owner at a time. So the ownership, has a special uh, characteristics or, uh, of NFT. And coming to the part of the uniqueness, so every NFT has its uniqueness. So it can't be uh, interchangeable or it can't be have the features of the similar one. So it has something uh, unique and it, you can also uh, see the uniqueness in each NFT, okay? And that can be uh, screened or that can be measured in the form of the rarity. So rarity is a score or the metric that will uh, 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 that will define this uniqueness of the NFTs from one uh, one created uh, NFT on a blockchain network into the another NFT uh, created on a another blockchain networks. That will give the metric of the uniqueness. Okay, that is called as a rarity. Then comes the transparency as we are using the blockchain. Okay, the blockchain uh, is the transparent one. And we can be viewable and it can be uh, uh, viewable to everybody in the network who are in the blockchain. So that comes under the transparency. The full transparency will be supported to the NFTs. Then comes, comes under the interoperability. So interoperability in the sense, uh, it can be the data transfer. So we can data, uh, transfer the data uh, here we have the NFTs as a data. We can transfer the NFT, of course, and the, but it can't be uh, the having the two ownership for the uh, particular or a specific NFT. We need to uh, transfer, and they will have the authority to sell or buy, but they don't uh, have the ownership. Okay, so that is uh, called as an interoperability. Then comes, uh, can anyone create the NFTs? This is a big question among uh, uh, every uh, creators of NFT and the, the beginners of uh, the NFT. Even the layman uh, needs to know how the NFT works and how the, uh, the NFTs can create, whether the, every one can create this NFT, okay? So for that, the answer is yes, everyone can create the NFT by their platform of the uh, NFT market marketplace. Okay, so you can use any kind of uh, NFT marketplace to create the NFT. So the non fungible tokens, it will uh, have some special properties too. So one of the property is each token is minted and has a unique identifier that is directly linked to one Ethereum address. So minted in the sense. So you have the unique uh, identifier token that is the non fungible token here, and that can be mint, uh, that can be used uh, by the another user, but it can't uh, be interchanged. That is uh, one of the special property of NFT, and they are not uh, directly interchangeable with other tokens uh, of one is to one. Okay? For example, one ETH is exactly the same as the another ETH. So it has no difference or it can't be interchangeable. You need to note, uh, make a note of it. So one ETH is exactly the same as the another ETH. This isn't the case with the NFTs, okay? So um, each token that has an owner, and this information is easily verifiable one. They live on uh, Ethereum, and it can be bought and sold on any Ethereum-based NFT market. Okay, so here, uh, now I'm going with the next uh, popular NFT projects. I'm going to explain each uh, NFT projects one by one. The first NFT project is CryptoPunks. So the CryptoPunks will show you the uh, uniquely generated characters. They have uh, the 10,000 generated characters there and no two are exactly alike. So 10,000 uh, characters or uh, generated characters are unique. So it won't be 
are like uh, each other okay and uh, each one of them can be officially owned by a single person on the ethereum blockchain so this is the basic and main rule to be followed for every person and originally they could be claimed for free by anybody with the ethereum wallet so i am using the ethereum wallet as a metamask as you know uh, before uh, by the before session okay so but all that uh, these uh, 10000 uniquely generated characters were quickly claimed so this is one of the advantage of the crypto pumps and now they just be purchased from someone via the marketplace that also embedded in the blockchain so once we enter into the marketplace you can buy a uh, bid on and we can offer some of the pumps for the sale right so that would be uh, happen in this crypto pumps then comes the decentraland so decentraland is also one of the uh, popular uh, uh, popular nft project where they determine the future of the virtual world uh, the first uh, fully decentralized world happens in this decentraland so they have the dao uh, that is being uh, controlled by this centraland and that owns the most important smart contracts and assets of this the decentra uh, decentraland so this uh, a project has been a successful one and via this dao you decide and vote on how the world works then comes the um, nba top shot so in this nba top shot it, it it allows the users to buy sell and collect the nba nfts that showcase the influential moments that minted on the flow blockchain some moments are rather than others right so but the rarest version or the worth the most that is being this nba uh, top shots okay the moments are minted in packs much like you would expect from physical trading cards then uh, is the agile infinity so this is also one of the popular uh, nft project where the non fungible token is based on the online video game so as we all uh, enjoyed with the video game we come across with uh, n number of uh, uh, online video games during our covid period and we also create and develop some of the interesting video games right so one among the, the token based online video game developed by this vietnam studio sky navis is the agile Uh, sorry axi infinity you know it is being uh, for its game economy we choose as the ethereum based uh, cryptocurrency so it is being an um, enjoyment as an entertainment as a game as well as it for use the cryptocurrency so most of the um, uh, existing uh, projects are followed by this nft project only and uh, the uh, next uh, nft project is open sea which is uh, uh, implemented by uh, myself and i am much interested in using this open sea so it is being the world's first and the largest digital marketplace for the crypto collectibles so collectibles in the sense you can create your own artwork or the digital work or it might be the image or jpeg or uh, you can trade those uh, art pieces also okay and the non fungible token that is nft and you can buy sell and discover the exclusive digital item over this open sea so i am very much interested in doing so i am going to uh, show how you uh, are going to create an nft in this open sea marketplace and how how you going to sell or buy as a demo in the uh, upcoming slide and the final one is sora so the sora uh, is also an interesting nft project where they own your game Okay. so where they collect play and win officially licensed digital cards uh, featuring the world's best of uh, global football and the major league baseball players so that is being a very successful one of uh, nft project by this uh, so that so all among this so you have the uh, thing how we create an nft right so you can easily prove that you are the creator in the nft and you can also determine the scarcity and you can earn the loyal fees and royalties every time while it being sold Okay, you can sell it on any uh, NFT marketplace or the other tier. So you are not locked into any platform, and you don't need to anyone to intermediate between this uh, uh, between this process. So that is being the important thing of this NFT while using in the uh, chains of the Ethereum blockchain. Okay, so you can use uh, uh, then you you will have that query like in a, how to own an NFT. So as I can. create an nft i can also be an uh, uh, as i am also can own an nft right so you can easily prove you own it by having several features i will list out some of the features of uh, owning it 
so you can prove you own an nft which is similar to proving your uh, you have that eth right eth which you show which has been shown in the ethereum blockchain so in your account in your uh, wallet you have that eth so uh, by having that eth you can easily show in your wallet likewise you can also own your uh, nft with that wallet and uh, the token that proves that your copy of the digital file is the original for example let's say you purchase an nft and the ownership of the unique token is transferred to your wallet via your public address as we were shown in the previous session okay so your private key is uh, being the process of having that uh, private blockchain right so that private key is being the proof of ownership of the original one then the content creators the uh, public key which serves as a certificate of authenticity for that particular digital artifact so these are the steps done by this popular nft projects and the creators of the public key is essentially the permanent part of the token history okay so these all are the points that comes under for this popular nft projects and another way to think about uh, proving you own the nft is being the signing messages to prove you own the private key behind that address so these all are mentioned the uh, thing about the private key and this being the proof of ownership of the original one okay so no one can manipulate it in any way as it is in the ethereum blockchain and you can sell it and in some cases this will earn the original creator and resell the royalties or you can uh, hold it forever resting comfortably knowing your asset is secured by your wallet on the ethereum right so then comes the way to buy and sell the nfts so here are the marketplaces are uh, popular marketplaces and familiar with most of the uh, blockchain developers we are using this nft uh, marketplace to uh, buy and sell the nfts and one among us open sea so, uh, so i am going to show you the open sea in the next uh, slide and uh, super rare is one of the uh, popular nft market chain and rarible nifty gateway and mintable so everything is a popular uh, nft marketplaces where you can buy and sell, uh, sell the nfts you can uh, use by your own i will show one of the uh, open sea right here so that is open sea this is the first and the largest nft marketplace this is the home screen of this uh, open sea let me uh, share my screen of nft just as a pin i will show you the open sea and i will let you know how to create the nft and how to sell and buy the nft just a moment Just a moment, just a moment. I'm just looking for it. All right. I'm sharing my screen to you. Let me share it again. all right so here you see my uh, open sea uh, profile so can you able to see my screen of open sea marketplace yes uh, yes yes uh, doctor yes thank you and uh, so this is the open sea nft marketplace it is very user friendly so you need to uh, sign up first of all either with your uh, google or you need to sign up with your uh, details providing of your uh, credentials after signing up you need to uh, move on to this page this is the home page of the open sea where you have see the tabs like create resource tabs and explore so in order to create a nft you we need to click on this uh, create so before that i will show the profile so while you click on the profile it will show uh, your you need to uh, change your name with respect to your uh, interested one and you will have the address here you can copy of your uh, nft address and here you have the tabs like collected created favorite and uh, activity and more so here in collector i just uh, ping one uh, 
uh, logo of my special laboratory and I just uh, give the price of that and I will show you how to create uh, such a uh, uh, logo, uh, such an image or uh, any file to be uh, created. Then uh, in created part, so once I have created this uh, PCT uh, logo right here, so it will come as a collection into my profile. And if I favorited some uh, digital art, that will come under this tab. And in activity, so we have a number of activity. So one, uh, if this is the one I used to create uh, by today because I need to show you the sample uh, uh, OpenSea Marketplace. So I just created one, uh, I just minted this uh, PCT local image into this uh, uh, marketplace. And I just uh, priced as 0 0.001 and quantity as one. And I just give uh, the from address and uh, two. And uh, this has been created before 11 hours ago. So that is the detail of activity which shown in the activity uh, tab. Then comes here uh, uh, while you uh, go into the digital asset. So there will be the offers uh, if you want to buy or if you want to sell. So you have some uh, active listing in active listing and if it, if it has any hidden or any offers, okay, you can choose from here while clicking on this more okay now comes how to create a nft okay here comes the file supported our uh, image video audio or the 3d model so and the file supporter should be the jpeg P, uh, png so you can just click on this open c.io so that you can also uh, uh, use or um, use with me okay so here are the supported files um it should be restricted to the maximum size of 100 mb so while you clicking on some images to be low, okay, I'm just giving some, uh, mm -hmm. I don't know. I'm just giving so, this image uh, for an example. So I need to give a uh, name as a mandatory one. I'm just giving, okay. Uh, then the external link. So this is an optional one where you have the link of this URL on the item of the detail page. Okay, so you can uh, uh, have this link as in uh, uh, to your own uh, web page. Okay, you have uh, the external link for an optional one. And description is also an option, right? This is not a required format. And the collection. So in the collection is also where you, the item will uh, appear, will come under this collection. You can select the collection right here. Then you have the properties and uh, the properties can also be changed with this uh, character. And you can also add more on that character. Okay, so you can change the properties. Then the levels, uh, that is a numerical trace of the progress bar, where uh, here it, it shows like a speed from the value of three or five. So you can change this, okay. Then comes the stats and the unlockable content, uh, then explicit and sensitive content. So here you go with the supply. I want to uh, just have only one. So here is a number of item that can be minted. Uh, here there will be no, gas cost to you and I'm going to uh, use the blockchain here as an polygon because every uh, blockchain even the ethereum blockchain has the gas fee while we uh, uh, create an nft or sell or buy while using the ethereum blockchain okay so polygon is one of the chain of the ethereum so we can use this polygon this is being a test uh, network or uh, test network for the ethereum blockchain and it's being used for uh, uh, testing your NFTs. It is not as an original one, it is a test network, okay? So I am just clicking on this polygon. Um, this is a freeze metadata where you can freeze your metadata that will allow you to permanently lock and it will store the items content in the decentralized file storage. So we use the IPFS. So that is being a creative one. And I'm going to create now a NFT. So now I'm going to switch the network. Okay, I'm just switching the network where I have the MetaMask right here. So I'm switching the network and I'm going to the next one. I'm going to connect. So it's being connected. I'm giving the next. Okay, so once it is being accepted by this uh, Polygon network, it will proceed further. Okay, so I'm having my MetaMask valid right here. So it will connect between, the, it will switch between this Polygon network. Okay, so just wait. So it is being loaded. You take a moment. Oh, put something happening. Mm -hmm. 
all right so now i have switched my account to the polygon account okay so, so you can see here the metamask wallet where i have uh, a number of uh, networks uh, in the ethereum mainnet i will use it for the, the mainnet while i'm uh, going for e and Kenachi, you've uh, seen in the previous session, right? And the other the test networks are uh, Cardi and the Sapolia and local host. So I'm using this Polygon for uh, the no, low cost or no cost fee. Uh. Okay, cash fee. So I'm creating right here. I'm almost done. So it has some process. Okay. Just checking for I'm a human or a robot. All right. Oh, so this asset name is not uh, available. It's, okay, fine. I'll change this as I can see. No, I'm just giving. All right. So I take a moment. Well, I'm moving to the next one because it's being created. Okay, uh, now I have created a NFT. Okay. So see here, so once I have created, here are some options to transfer and to share. So if you want to share, you can share via the copy link with the social media or you can share on Facebook or the Twitter. Okay. Then you have the option like a transfer. As I said you in the uh, previous slide, you can transfer the NFTs, right? So if you want to transfer the NFT, you will be the owner and you one, only own uh, this NFT. You can't uh, uh, interchangeable or you can't exchange this, okay? So you can transfer, but you can't be the, uh, the two owner of one NFT. Okay, so I can transfer. So if I click on the transfer, whom I want to transfer will give this address. If, uh, as I shown here, right, in this profile, you have the address. If anyone are requesting for uh, to transfer the created NFT, then you will give that the, those address and you will click on this transfer, so that the particular uh, person will uh, have this NFT. Okay, so this is how to create it. And uh, just a minute, I will show you. So once I have created the NFT, I will transfer. I can share this to uh, my friends or colleagues or nearest or peers, and then I will move on to the sell option. Okay? So once it's been created, let me show you. So how to sell this? Okay. So it will check for it, and it will have some uh, selection, and you can sell this by clicking on this sell. Okay. For that. You have uh, given a fixed price or the time auction as per your uh, suggestion. Okay, then uh, you need to give some ETH amount of 0 0.01, okay, 0 0.01 or 0 0.05. So anything, it could be your choice of uh, giving uh, those ETH. And uh, here you have the duration. So your NFT has been created and it, it should be uh, viewable to everyone, right? So that they can. Uh, uh, Bought your uh, NFT. So you can give the duration as one month. Uh, accordingly, you can give anything uh, between the range of how many months you needed. Okay, so up to six months, it's uh, viewable here. And then comes some more option. You have the uh, sell as a bundle and then so for the specific buyer. Sells as a bundle, we have once you have created the uh, plethora of uh, NFTs, you can sell those as a bundle. And uh, this is the reserve for specific buyer where you can, uh, the item, the NFT can be purchased as soon as it is listed. So it is a uh, reservation category. Okay. Then you have the service fee and the creator fee as a 2.5% as a service fee. And creator fee is an, a 0% one. So this is a complete listing. So while I click on the complete listing, I will move on to uh, the sell process. Uh, once the confirm is uh, the confirm listing is over, then we will uh, go for the open. Or we will be on live of having those uh, NFT for the price of zero point zero five. It's been confirming. It's been confirming. Okay, fine. So this is how to uh, sell the NFT. Then um, to buy the NFTs, you, you can uh, directly go to the NFT marketplace and you can uh, buy the respective uh, 
uh, NFT by having some offers or uh, anything I have shown you. Right? Okay, I will also show the details of this NFT. Just a moment. Okay, so in this detail, you can you know, see your contract that is a smart contract address is right here, and the token ID of your NFT is right here, and token standard that is ERC1155. As I said, uh, ERC20 uh, is not a fungible one, so this ERC1155 is a token standard here, and the blockchain used is Polygon, okay, because we are using the test. Test network, right? So I'm choosing the polygon and the metadata is being the centralized one. And the here uh, creator earnings here is still zero percent because just now we have created. And if you want to uh, uh, see this option of earnings once anyone buy or if any, uh, you can check with your friends to buy this. Okay, so that your earnings will uh, come a uh, hike of the percentage. Okay, so this is how you can create your NFTs, buy the NFTs, and sell the NFTs, okay, and uh, sorry, I will show you. So, yeah, thank you. thank you so much for this wonderful opportunity. I'm ending up with the session of OpenSea um, Marketplace. So, do try that. Uh, uh, a popular NFT marketplace and you just uh, have your digital assets and digital arts in the NFT marketplace. Hope you understood and hope you enjoy the session. Thank you everyone. And thank you Krishan sir for giving this wonderful opportunity again. Thank you. Thank you Dr. Hema. Thank you ma'am for your wonderful speech. Now I would like to call upon Mr. Bachelor's of English degree in Department of IT Convergence and Application Engineering and currently pursuing his doctorate of philosophy. He has worked as assistant professor in A. His area of interest are Internet of Things, Blockchain, Vanet, and Crypto. His teaching areas are data science and mobile application development. I hardly know. Uh, Dr. Akash, you can start. Okay. So, first of all, warm regards to everyone. And thank you so much, Dr. Krishnan, for giving me this opportunity to present my idea and uh, to everyone. So I hope I am audible to everyone. Am I audible? Yes, please. Yes, please. Okay, okay, okay. Thank you so much. Yeah, so today I'm going to talk about the IoT and the blockchain security. And uh, ma'am already introduced me. My name is Professor Akash Patil. Currently, I'm an assistant professor in Parul University, that is in Gujarat. So yeah, so what will be the today's outline? Let's see. So today we are going to see about what exactly the IoT is and what are the security and the privacy issues are that we are facing in IoT and how we can come overcome from that. Uh, we have some of the techniques called as blockchain and what exactly the blockchain is and how we are going to merge uh, IoT in a blockchain. And one of the proposed idea is based on a smart home. And finally, we will conclude. So yeah, so first of all, what exactly the IoT is? IoT is nothing but uh, any physical devices in our real world, which are embedded with some software, sensors, and the actuator over the internet for the exchanging the information. So basically, whatever the things which we have looking around us, which are connected over the internet for exchanging the information by embedding some software or sensors. So what exactly this is IoT? So we know that stuff, right? So apart from that, uh, in our day-to-day -day life, uh, like you can see the most of the stuff in uh, like in each and every field, we are looking what exactly the IoT is. Like uh, in terms of agriculture also, automotive instrumentations, even yeah, during the COVID, we have seen the most of the IoT stuffs are there in terms of healthcare, right? In terms of safety, remotes, toys, 
and infrastructure security purpose so nowadays you know the iot is involved in each and every field so basically there is a very large variety of smart iot devices that are going, going to be introduced in terms of it field also right and each device has the precious purpose and specific character for example if you are talking about some sensors like you know we have a humid sensor smoke detector smoke sensor physical sensor so each sensors have in on each specific characters so we have the one common line we can say that human is not a center of the system but it is a part of the uh, part of it like so here we are talking about the io so as uh, day by day like you know Mm, the graph of the iot stuffs are going to be involves are like uh, many more so it's been assumed that uh, by the end of the year 2025 uh, more than uh, like you know 11 trillion of the devices are going to be connected to the iot going to the next like you know basically iot are like architecture and representation by the four building blocks right so uh like you know the iot whole iot is uh, stuck within the four building blocks such as things database network infrastructure and the cloud infrastructure so things means like any physical devices uh, like around us or it could be a chair it could be the mobile it could be the anything any physical device right uh next is a gateway gateway acts here like the intermediary between the things and the cloud to provide the connectivity security and the manageability next is called as uh, in network infrastructure so that is a third building blocks so it is a set of device that control the secure data flow between the clouds and the thing and the cloud infrastructure means uh, it will be a virtualized server that will store the data whatever the data is sharing to the io right so here we are taking the dedicated example called as a smart home so basically normal home we have so like you know we can the build up uh, that normal home to the smart home by providing the some of the various iot devices such as you know uh, security stuff camera smoke detector motion sensors and heating and most of the many stuff we can just provide with the normal house and we can control that all the stuff through the remotely right so that we can make and control our home from anywhere in the uh, in the world right so let's assume that we already created the smart home and what are the various issues we are facing once we built up the smart home so what are the open problems let's find out so basically smart homes it could be the dream or a nightmare let's find out so as you know that the if we are building the our normal home the smart home then it will collect and analyze the lot of sensible users data right so whatever the information we are giving to to the devices that are very sensible information right so every new connected appliance is getting the more the data and the you know the adversary can like you know shows the and catch the pattern and the behavior of the digital trials of the personal data so this uh, this personal data could be easily fall in a wrong hands such as we can say that maybe or theft or maybe like attackers they can easily get this kind of data and this increased connectivity exponentially increase the threat surface also right so according to this stuff we can say that the dream might be just a game and the path of the to the privacy and the users awareness is a long way and right so yeah this is the main problem we are facing that you know decentralized technology risk concern device communication performance privacy issue lack of security standards so these are the main problems we are going to recognize to if we are equipped the iot stuff and of course by using this like there are appealing ideal target for the various cyber attacks right so as we know that the two sides of coins always have so if we in one hand the iot offers the data and the you know personalized service and make the human effort very less but on other hand you know the problems such as security stuff right so what is the solution for this how we can ensure the like security and the privacy in terms of iot yeah the solution is a blockchain right so let's see what exactly the blockchain is uh, so i think i am going to skip this part as already presenter already discussed what exactly the blockchain is so we already know what exactly the blockchain and yeah the miner 
so basically the miner is the one term like you know any node in the blockchain it that uh, could be the miner right so as many uh it any node in the blockchain network could be the miner but what exactly the miner so miner role is nothing but to responsible for the mining mining means for adding a new block in a blockchain network so how the any node can be the miner and how he can or he or she can be the uh, uh, like you know uh, adding some of the different blocks in the blockchain network simple as solving the cryptographic puzzle called as the proof of work once it will solve that proof of work and then the miner can join the new block so when a new transaction occurs in the broadcast network it will broadcast to the entire network so whenever the new blocks will be added in a blockchain network it will broadcast to the entire network and by this uh, you know the miner will add a new block in the blockchain so basically simple funda is like you know the, this is the role of the miner so yeah this is the diagram how a uh, previous uh, presenter already speak about how the a uh, blocks can be added in a blockchain and the proof of work uh, how it can solve the cryptographic puzzles and how it can be uh, add a new block and what are the advantages of the blockchain so yeah first advantage is like you know the it could be the public decentralized secure let's discuss about the secure like the existing database can only be extend on the previous record but it cannot be uh, changed right so once the you know the information can be stored in terms of transaction and it can contain the previous hash so it cannot be changed it cannot be altered by any advisor so solution in blockchain is it worth it let's say some features of blockchain may be attractive for addressing the security and the privacy challenges in the iot so what are the various features we are discussing as we know that the iot is a centralized bridge right so here by adopting the blockchain it can be the decentralized anonymity and the secret so these are the various solutions that are the attractive towards the blockchain in terms of iot so but also by adopting the blockchain in an in terms of iot we have the major issue less processing power and the time as we know that the iot devices are the resource constraints right so this is a huge problem to see it lies the among the blockchain in terms of the iot and also the scalability storage and traffic for this could be the main problem we can face by merging iot and the blockchain so to overcome from that uh, we have one of the problem design how we overcome from this kind of problem so one of the concept and proposed solution is that uh, like you know once we eliminate the cost of proof of work and uh, you know that can be recover from the what we can say like uh, computation power and the framework relies on completely on a hierarchical structure and distributed and that can be provide the blockchain security so basically proposed solution one architecture is that based on the smart home and that architecture is divided into three part first is a smart home overlay network and the cloud storage again in smart home we have the three sub types units called as a device local blockchain and the local storage as the previous presenter already discussed about the private blockchain so here we are discussing about the local blockchain uh, it's uh, similar to the private blockchain so as we know that in a smart home that they have the three components called as the device local blockchain and the local storage so device could be anything which we can through which we can manage our home uh, and the comfortness local blockchain it could be the uh, private blockchain a secure and the private blockchain that is mined and stored one more than one device and that local blockchain can be managed by the owner of the house and the local storage that means uh, the, all the information that can be stored locally on right and uh, in a device like communication between the local device and the overlay nodes are called as a transaction so here uh, like you know if we are talking about the blockchain so whatever the information is sharing we we can call that information call as a transaction so here in the device like whatever the transaction between the local device and the network or uh, like that can call as a transaction and all transaction uh, use a shared key at for the secure communication right and each transaction is designed for the specific functions so first like you know store access monitor genus remote 
so storing if for is this uh, like you know transaction is dedicatedly used for the storing the data uh, like access transaction that generated by the service provider or we can say the owner of the home and monitor like you know by using this uh with this are the various transaction they are going to be used for the transaction even the like you know like smart home, uh, smart business communicate directly with each other with the external or uh, like you know outside of the home and to achieve a uh, user control over the transaction and for the privacy and the security we are using a shared key and uh, you know uh, to allocating the key the miner asks a permission from the policy header and they distributed the share key between the device and the owner right so after sharing that both key and then device can communicate directly as long as key is the valid so here the main key shared key is a very important and to deny the permission miner marks the distributed key as a invalid suppose or uh, like let's say key um, whenever the some of the unauthorized person may get enter in a network so at that time the owner of the that uh, local blockchain they can just deny permission right so likewise how we can, they can add an access and the monitor by using this stuff. and store data to the cloud storage uh, this is the stuff so next talk about the local blockchain so in a each smart home there are local private blockchains uh, so here we are discussing about the our proposal like right so in a private blockchain like you know so that have the transaction and has a policy header so policy header like you know that will enforce the policy whether uh, this device should be add or that can be should be the delete or denied so whatever the policy is set by the owner of the on block they can set to the policy so each block contain the two headers one is the block header and another is the policy header so block header contain the hash of the previous block to keep the local blockchain immutable right so whatever the like you know the link of the each and every block so that will contain the previous hash of the block and that can be keep in a local blockchain and that can be stored in the block header and next is about the policy header so it is used to authorize the devices whether or which device should be add or which device should be denied so yeah. so each block contain the two headers called is a block header and the policy header so again in a local blockchain we have the like uh, besides the header each block contains the number of transactions as uh, once we acquire the local blockchain in a smart home so of course many times we are sending some of the information <clears throat> for the transactions right so so a uh, contains a num- each block will contain the number of transaction and for each transaction a uh, various five parameters are stored in the local blockchain for example let's say the previous transaction transaction number uh, particularly device whatever the device will add so unique device id id can also be added in that uh, uh, one of the parameter in the local blockchain then a transaction type that means whether should be add or you know access or store or just simply monitor corresponding multi sign transaction so these are various parameters can be added in a local and then uh, the local blockchain is maintained and managed by the home miner that means the owner of the house so yeah the miner is the device that centrally processes incoming and outgoing transaction to or from of the smart contract so whatever information we are going to share uh, that can be managed by the miner only it authenticate authorize and audit all the transaction even whether a uh, new block need to be added uh, need to update the key so all can be managed by the miner only to provide the additional capacity miner can manage the local store so once the it is want to delete the data he want to add the capacity of the local store right miner can manage that stuff so miner collects all the transaction in a block and append the block in the blockchain so yeah once it satisfied then miner will uh, add the blocks in the block so of course local storage here the we have the backup drives or like that can be used as a local storage to store the data locally and it can be integrated with the miner or it can be the separated devices and this will completely based on the fifo and the data specifically device that can be stored in a ledger chain and devising from the starting point of the uh, whatever the data can be stored 
so yeah so whatever we discuss will summarize in the figure so yeah you can see the diagram like you know this is the lo smart home and here in the smart home we have the minor also local storage we have attached and the various devices whatever the we are going to acquire in the smart home that can be added so here in the block uh, you can see what this is one block this is the second block and the block header policy header the transaction and in terms of whatever the like you know genus or uh, create or the man these are the various previous hash uh, and the, this is a structure of the policy header like you can see what uh, which device need to be add and this is the device id like for example uh, let's say the security camera have the device and that device id has a four and whether need to allow or deny that can be managed in a policy header by the miner and the structure of the transaction it will contain the previous transaction and maybe the transaction number to which what information or transaction can be done that can be add in a device uh, id to the device id transaction type maybe genius access store or monitor that can be uh, that can be stored here and corresponding multi sign if any they want to add more signature that can be managed to the here and of course the overlay network that can be uh, like you know the packet flow and packet flow whenever the permission is needed from the miner so yeah this is the overlay network why we are going to use the overlay network as it will acts as a p2p -to -p network and in order to get the anonymity of the ip layer so we are going to use a, a tor right and to decrease the network overhead and the delay so for that purpose the network is divided into cluster and each cluster have the clustering head so yeah why we are using this uh, like tor and all this stuff because uh, uh, once we imply uh, once we merge the iot and the blockchain you know the overhead issues and the traffic issues may be arise so to overcome from that we are using this so let's say if any node delayed is not tolerant that node can lead the change the cluster right so any node in a cluster that can be elect its own team leader we can say as a cluster head any time so each cluster head contains the public key of the requester public key of the request is and the forward address that means whether to allow the access of data from the smart home allow the access the smart home to connect to the cluster and transaction sent from other cluster head in the network so that can be managed through the cluster head only and moreover cluster head independently decide whether to keep a new block or discard it so that completely depend on the cluster head and there is a no requirement of the blockchain to be reconciled so that can be synchronized the overhead and that can be how it will reduce the overlay network and of course the cloud storage uh, here we are talking about the whatever the local storage we were talking and whatever the uh, information whatever the sensitive information that can be stored in the local storage device and by figure you can see how our uh, like you know this is the cluster head you can see and these are the various devices which were connected through it and uh, you know this is the figure how you can say and finally we will conclude that what happened once we implies the blockchain and the iot stuff and uh, of course we have seen what are the problems we are getting once we implies the iot and blockchain and to cover to overcome from that problem we are using this stuff and what uh, what are the main threat like you know the threat to accessibility threat to authentication and access control threat to anonymity like you know this is the goal of the adversary here to prevent the uh, legitimate user to getting access the data or the services the adversary tries to authenticate the genuine user in order to gain the access to the data and the goal of the attackers to find the real identity so that is the reason we are using a talk so like let's summarize this by using this talk like you know the, the by adopting this proposed design the, that will be guaranteed the secure security and the privacy benefits can be introduced and that of course that can be significantly outweighed and the low overhead once we implies the iot and the blockchain and of course once we propose this of the solutions so yeah thank you so much for listening and i hope this is and from my side side thank you dr akash uh, yeah thank you so much to the end of the workshop i deem it a great honor and privilege to propose the vote of thanks 
on this memorable occasion. Let me first of all start by giving glory to Almighty God for making today's occasion a resounding success. My heart fills with a lot of gratitude and respect for our distinguished guest speaker, Aditi Kharabu, Dr. Krishna Oma Chandran, Mrs. Elia, Dr. B. Shri Vignahema, Mr. Aka Suresh Patel, for not only sparing their valuable time with for us to grace this occasion, but also like enlightening us with their commendable talk on the subject. Thanks all of you for clearing our concept and enhancing understanding towards blockchain technology. We have indeed put in even unsuccessful even. We already owe you a lot. Lost but not least, I thank all my friends for your cooperation in making this function a resounding success. Finally, I leave you this inspiring quote. An individual has not started living until he rises above the confines of his individual aspect, concurrent to the broader concurrent of all humanity. Thank you once again. Thank you. Thank you all. Thank you all. Uh, Yeah, I'm, uh, can I close the uh, meeting? Yeah. Uh, sir, like feedback, li feedback link is shared in the chat. I don't know how many of them uh, filled it. So once, okay. Uh, dear participants, we request everybody to fill the evaluation and feedback form to get your certificates. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. No, Bye. Uh, the meeting is closed. Thank you all. Bye. Thank you, sir.